Thanks for joining us here today. If this is your first time or you're returning to us, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. While you're there, give us an update on how God is working in your life. Now, if He's working life change through our ministries, let me encourage you to give to us financially on the website by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so very much for tuning in today, and welcome to Church. Thanks, Dad. It's uh, kids teach us about Advent all the time. I remember as a kid, particularly that part, uh, what we'll start with Wednesday nights, waiting. I mean, I remember when you was a kid, and December was the longest month of the year, because you thought Christmas would never get here. You were waiting and expecting, and that's what Advent means. It means expecting the coming, and uh, all through the life of Christ, before Christ was born, they were expecting him to be born. They're the prophets of old, and all of that, and I won't get into teaching all that, but uh, it, it is a waiting and an expectancy, and um, and any of you who are mothers can relate to that expectancy, and and you are growing and growing, and it doesn't diminish you; it grows you, right? And, but but it it makes that birth so much more sweet. You're looking forward to it and expecting a time for that birth. So. This is going to be a good uh, a good series on Wednesday nights. We invite you to come be a part of it. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Matthew, chapter 26. I want to thank you, those of you who were here, um, I, I think it was two weeks ago when Hannah was here, um, who is going on a mission trip for two months, going to uh, Honduras to do mission work there. And she shared with you a little bit about her heart and her mission. And uh, you gave and supported her. She has uh, set a goal. She needs uh, $3,000 to, that includes her airfare and her uh, her two months stay there in Honduras, that's her overall goal. And so she came and just, I invited her to share that vision with you a couple of weeks ago. And I just wanted to report to you that you as a congregation, uh, you gave $2,000 to her goal. So that was huge. That was a huge, huge part of her overall goal, and I just want to thank you for your generosity in giving. Um, Matthew 26, we're going to pick this story up just as the people are coming to arrest Jesus to take him away to be go through this mock phony trial and then to be crucified. And Judas... Uh, the disciple who betrayed him, he's already told the people that will come. He's sold out for 30 pieces of silver. And he says, in case you don't know who to arrest, the one that I kiss, that will be the one you need to arrest. And so verse 47 says, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men Armed with swords and clubs, they had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him a kiss. And Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you've come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus, this doesn't tell us who here, but it was Peter, we find out later, pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? 
I told them in the early service that I really struggled. I struggled all day yesterday, most of the night last night. And I struggled this morning, and I struggled all the way through my message, trying to, trying to get what was in my head and in my heart out of my mouth and hoping that it would come across and you would, you would get my point. Um, so I'm, I'm still hoping that this morning because this is a little bit different than probably what I typically, uh, would speak to you on, but it's, um, uh, I'm not going to keep you long, but I will ask you to, to try to zone in with me because it's important that you hear what I have to say this morning. How many remember before... I don't know who the modern day heroes are. Uh, Power Rangers, all of them was kind of late, but this was pre them. Uh, there was a little uh, guy who was retired from the Navy named Popeye. <laughs> Remember Popeye? Okay, Popeye the Sailor Man. And Popeye had a little saying, whenever he would see injustice being done, or he would see evil, he would see something, particularly if it had to do with his beautiful girlfriend, Olive Oil. When someone was messing with Olive Oil or something was going wrong, Popeye would open up a can of spinach and suddenly his biceps and forearms would bulge and Popeye would go take care of business. You know, and I grew up watching Popeye. But Popeye had this saying, when he would see injustice and he would see evil, he would say, I takes it and I takes it till I can't takes it no more. And that's kind of what I see in Peter here. I see Peter as, as they come out to, to take Jesus away and arrest him. Peter says, no. I've heard what you said about him. I've heard the lies you told about him. I've watched you, I've watched you call him a, a drunkard and, and a friend of sinners, and I've seen you mistreat him, and now you're coming to arrest him and take him away. And he pulls out his sword. He says, I takes it and I takes it till I can't take it no more. And he slices the guy's ear off. And uh, I've always said it's a good thing Peter was a fish was a fisherman and not a soldier, because I don't think he was going for the ear personally. I think he was going to try to cut the guy's head into, you know. But he wasn't a soldier, and so he didn't. Um, he, he he got the guy's ear, but just just then Jesus does something that, quite frankly, I think it shocked everyone. I mean, that was a Popeye moment for Peter. I takes it and I takes it till I can't takes it no more. And he stands up to defend what's right and to defend against evil. But Jesus says something and does something that shocks everyone and it changes everything. He looks at Peter and he says, Peter, put that sword. What are you doing with a sword anyway? You're a fisherman. Put that up. You're not Zorro. Put that thing away. He says, don't you know, Peter, that if I, I could make one call to my father and he would send thousands of angels to come and he could stop all this, he could annihilate this whole group with just a thought, but Peter, if I did that, how would, how would things happen that has to happen? Evil has to run its course. You're not going to stop it by going around cutting people's ears off. And he says, you know, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, he says in one place. He says, but we're fighting powers and principalities and rulers in high places. We're, we're fighting attitudes. We're fighting long-lived prejudices in people's heart. We're fighting evil things that you don't even, this is not flesh and blood. This is about fighting things that you can't see. And so this challenged me as to how I wanted to try and attack this sermon today. 
Because it would be easy to preach about how the church just needs to rise up and attack evil. You know, how when we see injustice and evil, we just need to rise up and attack that thing. I takes it and I takes it till I can't takes it no more. That's kind of the way I started thinking about this. I, you know, I thought about Moses when Moses saw the Egyptian beating up the Israelite slave and he went in and killed the Egyptian. He said, I can't take it anymore. I thought about David, little David that come out and he saw Goliath coming down and mocking and making fun of the children of God and making fun of God himself. And he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Somebody give me a rock. He picks up a rock and a rag and slays the giant. I takes it and I takes it till I can't takes it no more. And, and I thought that's how, that's how I want to. But then something began to change. I began to think about this thing different. I began to think about Jesus saying, put your sword up. This battle's not going to be won by flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. He said, you know, we're not going to win this fighting conventional warfare. If you're going to win this battle and you're going to win this war, you're going to need a special weapon. And it's a weapon. It's the only weapon that's going to work in the war that we're fighting in. And it's a weapon called love. Now, don't, don't think when I say love, don't lose me there and think, oh, this is some soft, syrupy, sweet love sermon. Now, I'm not, I'm talking about, you got to understand, love is power. Power is love. Paul said, Paul said, love bears all things, believes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I think about People like Mother Teresa that, from Calcutta, India that changed her country with nothing but love. I think about men like Dr. Martin Luther King in the civil rights movement. What an impact he had on this country using nothing but love. He preached love and peace and he changed the face of this nation. Absolute, unconditional love. Now, I first wrote this sermon in the early, early hours of Saturday morning after going to bed Friday night and watching the news stories of this gunman who walks into an abortion clinic on Friday in Colorado and starts shooting and killing people. You probably heard about it. All in the name of Jesus, I'm sure. Pro-life, I'm sure. And there's no doubt in my mind that in this guy's mind, he was having a Popeye moment. I mean, he knows that abortion is wrong and he sees the injustice and he hates that millions of innocent babies have been aborted in this country. And in his mind, he says, I takes it and I takes it till I can't taste it no more. And so he goes off the deep end and in the name of pro-life, he kills people. He kills three innocent people and injures many, many more. Now, I don't know if he had a Popeye moment or a Peter moment or whatever the case, but I know it wasn't a God moment. And I know in my heart, if, if this person would have only listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, then he would have heard Jesus say, put your gun up. Rambo, you're not going to have to fight this war for me. Don't you know I could stop every abortion in this country? If I, I could think the thought and every abortion doctor and nurse and every abortion clinic would just go away if, I, if that's the way I wanted to do it. That's not the way. That's not the way things are going to happen. Yes, it's wrong. Yes, it's murder. Yes, uh, uh, killing police officers for being a police officer is wrong. Yes, police brutality is wrong. Yes, black on white killing's wrong and white on black killing's wrong and black on black and white on white and all of this is wrong. All the sin is wrong. It's all sin. But, but don't you know that sin has to run its course in this world? 
We live in a sinful world. He said, when it's time, don't worry, I'm going to step up from where I'm seated at my father's right hand, and my father's going to say, I've tasted and I've tasted till I can't taste it no more, and I'm going to come back, gather my children together, and I'm going to destroy evil in this world. But it's not going to be on your time, in your way. It's going to be in my time, in my way. So why was it so wrong for Peter to stand up and cut this guy's ear off defending the Lord? Why was it so wrong for this guy to walk into an abortion clinic and defend the Lord and defend life? Think, think about this, particularly with Peter. I always found it interesting that he cut off this guy's ear. Not his hand, not a leg, but he cut off his ear. In other words, he cut off his ability to hear, didn't he? He cut off his ability to hear the gospel. He cut off his ability to hear Jesus. I wonder how many ears we've cut off in the name of Jesus. I wonder how many eyes we've plucked out all in the name of Jesus. All to defend the Lord, all to defend what's right, all to, all to save Jesus. We're coming to the rescue in this, and in doing so, we cut people's ability to hear the gospel off. We cut people's ability to see Jesus off. When this gunman walked into that clinic on Friday afternoon and started shooting people in the name of religion, how many people did he take away their ability to hear the gospel? People say, if that's the gospel, I don't want anything to do with it. If that's what Christianity is, then I don't have anything to do with it. If, if Christianity and following Christ is about going around and shooting people you disagree with, then I how many people did he cut their ears off? Did he pluck their eyes out? Did he, did he do away? I wonder how many people. I mean, this is no better than, than ISIS killing people in the name of whoever their God is. This is, this is, I mean, I don't want to hear about their God when they're going around blowing up buildings and committing these acts of terror. And this, that doesn't make me want to become joined ISIS. Because there's nothing about that that's attractive to me. It cuts off my ears from that. I don't even want to hear about that. It makes me sick to hear about it. By this, Jesus said, shall all men know you're my disciples by your love one for another. Love, the power of love. When you see that, when you, and I'm not talking about loving somebody that loves you back. He said anybody can do that. I'm not talking about loving people that look like you and vote like you and act like you and talk like you. I'm talking about loving your enemies. I'm talking about loving those that despitefully use you, loving those people that you disagree with. I'm talking about loving abortion doctors and nurses. I'm talking about loving people that you disagree with, people that, that you don't like, you can't stand what they're doing, but you love them. He said, I would, this is the kind of love I'm talking about, a powerful love. I want them to see me in you. I want them to hear me through you. You don't have to like what they're doing, but I want you to love them. Because Jesus says, by this, all men will know you're my disciples, by your love one for another. So I guess my Popeye moments come when I see Christians acting like idiots, shooting up abortion clinics and hating on homosexuals and gathering up in our little cliques of black church and white church and rich church and poor church and the haves and the have-nots and the, 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 the Baptist ridicule and the Pentecostals and the Methodists ridicule and this and this and the people talking about the Catholics and this and I'm like, I've stood it and I stood it. I can't stand it no more. So now there's lots of folks that, 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 ridicule us. White folks don't like it because black folks come here. Black folks don't like it because black folks come here. You know? I don't know about Mexicans, Ben. 
how they, I got my, my Mexican over here. Ben's my token Mexican. But you know, I, I mean, that's where my Popeye moment comes, because I mean, I just get to the point where, you know, frankly, my dear, I don't care. I don't care because God said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm building a church that where he, we can go out into the highways and hedges and compel folks to come in. The halt, the lame, the broken, the blind, the Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, boys from the hood, girls from the street, wherever they come from, bring them in, let them hear, let them see, let the word of God Arise, all they have to do, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. You don't have to shoot anybody. You don't have to cut anybody's ear. You don't have to tell anybody how wrong they are and how bad they are and how horrible they are. He said, just love them. Just love them, just lift up me and I'll, I'll draw all men to me. As far as I know, we still have the most racially, denominationally, socially integrated church in this community. But it all started with a holy discontent, a Popeye moment. It started by recognizing, church, that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers in high places. In fact... Most of our warfare, most of our enemies are not from without. Most of our enemies are within, aren't they? So let me just switch gears a little bit as we come in for a landing. Let me ask you this. What is it in your life? Not, not your neighbors, not somebody else that's on the job. What is it in your life? What is it about you that you've taken it and you've taken it till you just can't take it no more? Something in my life, that, that's, it's a holy discontent, a holy anger that's rising up and says, you know, I've tried to quit this. I've tried to stop this. I've tried to be a better. I've tried to do that. Enough is enough. I'm done being a slave to drugs and alcohol. I'm done being a slave to lust and sexual perversion and addiction. I'm done with racial prejudice. I'm done with trying to think I'm better than this. I'm, I'm done with hatred in the name of religion. I'm done with slamming and bashing people because I happen to disagree with them or I happen to have a different. I'm, I'm done with ignoring the poor and thinking only about myself. I'm done. I hate that about me. I, I take it and I take it until I can't take it no more. I hate that about me. I'm, I'm tired of hurting others in the name of Jesus and religion. I don't want to cut people's ears off where they can't hear Jesus. God, forgive me for putting people's eyes out where they can't see Jesus. I just want to let my light so shine, let God's love so shine through me that others will be drawn. Others, the, the love will glorify the Father which is in heaven, that people will see Jesus in me. I've takes it and I've takes it till I can't take it no more. What is it in your life that you just can't take anymore? Can today be your Popeye moment? Can, to, can today be your take it back moment? Maybe this is your Jesus day. This is, this is your reclaim your life day. This is your take back control day. Put your sword up. You're not going to win this by flesh and blood. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by making God a bunch of promises. You're never going to do this again. It's not by going out and trying to straighten up. It's not by buying a suit and getting in church every Sunday. It's not by, it's saying, I've taken it and I've taken it and I can't take it no more. And I, today I'm going to lay it on the altar and I'm going to leave it there. I'm putting it away. And by the grace of God, it's going to be done with once and for all.
I've taken it and I've taken it. And I'm not taking it anymore. What's in your heart? This is your day. Bow your heads with me. Lord, we realize we're, we're not going to win this one with spinach. We're not going to win this one with swords and guns. And we're not going to win it with trying to do better and trying to straighten up. And we're not going to win it by bashing other people and, and making ourselves the spiritual vigilantes and the spiritual police of what's right and what's wrong. God, the only way we're going to win this one is through the love of Jesus Christ that bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You said your love never fails. That means today, God, if we trust you and we trust your love that Jesus died on the cross so we could be free, today I just want to look at the enemy within me. I want to look at that thing, God, that's in me that I hate. Maybe nobody else even knows about it, but it's in me, and I hate it, God. I hate it, and I've tried to quit, and I've tried to do this, and I've tried to start doing this and stop doing this, but I've taken it, and I've taken it till I just can't take it anymore. And God, if you don't do it, then it's not going to get done. So I'm asking you today, Lord, I want this to be my Popeye moment. I want this to be my Jesus moment. I want this to be my take it back moment. Lord, I realize that today there are those who are not here by accident. They're here by divine appointment. Right now, God, I believe you're speaking to our hearts. And this is our time. Again, we are incredibly glad that you joined us here today at Church of God. I encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or a prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.